Hello Jingles! Welcome to our channel. So last time in our last vlog, I we ride a train to check out what's left of the gold mines that was in Cripple Creek long time ago. So this time we will go underground. We will go a thousand feet underground to uncover the well-known gold mining in Cripple Creek this is their gift shop you can buy a lot of stuff here um, this is where you also buy the ticket for the gold mine tour Silver here. Is that silver? Peacock copper? Fool's gold. Gold is I want to buy this. I want to buy. Okay. Welcome to Molly Kathleen Gold Mine Tour. Before we start the tour, we are required to put on a hard hat for safety reason.
didn't feel like a thousand feet. Stand out here away from the shaft. Put your head. And uh, I'll explain that bell system later on, but what I gave the hoist there was a 3 3 gauge release. There'll be left that gauge right here on the level. He wouldn't know if we were getting on or off there or whatever, so he'll hang that up here about five feet. And then if there's another tour on top, and go pick them up. And so it's called a 3 3 gauge release, and it puts the cages back in his control up on the surface. So. And the two tunnels down here, they're called cross cuts and drifts, and a cross cut is the main tunnel that goes from the shaft to the vein of gold, and then once you get on the vein of gold while you turn and you follow that vein wherever it goes, and that tunnel what's called a drift, and so right now we're in the Gold King cross cut here, and we'll go on back here for just a little bit, so uh, your first name? Allison. Allison? You see that wooden plug in the lock there? Uh, that's yes. holding the liquid gold in the box, so don't pull that plug out. <laughs> okay, all right, here we go. <laughs> liquid gold. See, he's had a deal of trouble making that He did, did he? <laughs> And uh, this type of mining down here is referred to as hard rock mining as opposed to like coal mining. As you notice, there's no timber in down here. And it's very solid rock. It's pike speed granite. So it takes a lot of drilling and blasting to get this rock out of here. And those old timers back in the 1890s, they did all that work by hand, if you can imagine. So these are the holes that we put in the rock here to put our dynamite in to blast the rock out. And the old timers, they had to drill those holes with sledgehammers and hand steel. And so this small sledgehammer, this is what we call a single jack. And then this is your drill steel here, sometimes called a bull steel and you put that up against the rock and every time you hit it with a single jack while you turn it and that kind of helps drill the hole out more evenly and this is when you're working alone use those tools but if you had a partner you got to do what they call the double jacking method and you can see the guy sitting down on his haunches there he has a piece of drill steel up on his shoulder the guy behind him has the big sledgehammer and every time he hits that piece of drill steel with that double jack where the guy rotates it and like i said it helps to drill the whole lot more evenly and needless to say the guy with the sledgehammer has to have very good aim if he clocks his partner in the back of the head of that double jack they trade off on that job every so often and paybacks we all know about paybacks and, and the other complication they had here back in the 1890s they were working by candlelight so each miner was allowed three candles at the beginning of his shift and so between the two of them that have six candles to last the entire day and to give you an idea what that's like so if you can imagine trying to hit that piece of drill steel in this kind of light why well, again you had to have good aim so and then this is what it's like when we're mining down here it's darker in the inside of a cow down here when you're mining because if we had all these electric lights in here every time we blast we'd knock the lights out so the only light that we have to work about is this one light that i'm holding this is a headlamp that goes up on your hard hat and this is an LED bulb in here it's on a rechargeable battery and it'll last about 72 hours on one charge so it's a very dependable light but you want to take good care of it because it's the only light you have down here and my dad when he started working on the mines here back in the 1930s they used the carbide light at that time and the calcium carbide it comes on those cans there and you fill the bottom half of the lamp with the carbide which is like little gray granules you fill this about three quarters full and then you fill the top half of the lamp with the water and you open up this regulator and the water drips down onto that carbide and it forms an acetylene gas and it puts a nice flame out the burner here about two three inches long and with that reflector on there why well, it puts out a nice light so again this is a lot more dependable than a candle and this is the big carbide light you hang on the wall but my dad wore the small one right up on his hard hat and with that small light you had to keep a small can of the carbide with you all the time because he had to refill that about every three or four hours with new carbide so and you're welcome to take photos down here take all the photos you want so We'll head on back this way here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to just stand right where I bought that chain. And I apologize up front, I walk fast and I talk fast, but there's just a lot to show you down here in a very short amount of time, and then we'll have another tour coming down right behind us here, so we have to kind of keep moving. But anyway, after we blast for that rock, it's all broken up like this rock you see back in here, and that broken up rock, we call that muck, and you have to shovel the muck up into the ore car, and then once you get that car full of rock or muck, while well, you take it back out to the main shaft to be hauled up out of the mine, and out of one blast, uh, we'll get anywhere from 15 to 20 tons of rock, and a good hand mucker, it'll 
it'll take him anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes to fill one of these ore cars with a shovel. So it's a lot of work. It's a one-ton ore car. And these pieces, the flat steel here, we call those slick sheets or mud sheets. And before we blast, especially the old-timers, we'll lay five or six of those on the box or something. Now, he's a good guy. We like Jack Dempsey, so... And this is what we use now. This is called a mucking machine. This is an Imco 12B mucker. It operates on compressed air, and it works a lot like a little front-end loader. And rather than talk about it, I'll just show you the mucking machine. And I'll mention this thing is loud, so you may want to plug your ears because it is loud. But uh, this is... This is how we do it now. It just makes the job go a lot faster and a lot easier. doing that in kind of slow motion, but I have a brother-in-law, Charlie, and Charlie was really good and fast on one of these bucket machines, and he could fill this work hard here in about two minutes, whereas it took the old timer sometimes 15 or 20 minutes for the shovel. So, and this tunnel here continues on over to the Gold King mine, and there were over 500 working gold mines there within 24 square miles at one time, and they're all pretty well interconnected underground, and we connect the mines together for a lot of different reasons, like for ventilation, so we get good air flowing through here. And then also for water drainage and for safety, if you get trapped in one mine, why well, you can walk out to another mine and get out on that other mine. And then sometimes the veins of gold go from one mine and claim it and the next mine and claim it. So by just mining on that vein of gold, that connected the mines together. And you can actually walk from this Molly Kathleen mine here in Cripple Creek to the Ajax mine in Victor's.